This is the Vio 14.1 FE. And I really want to review this because I used to have a nostalgic attachment to the Sony Vio brand back in the day. Now it's no longer owned by Sony. Vio is owned by a different company. This laptop is actually pretty popular in India. They do sell it here or not here. I live in Canada. They do sell it in the United States at Walmart. And I wanted to see if they still have that quality attached to the name. And unfortunately for the price they're asking, this is one of the biggest ripoffs in the laptop market today. They're asking $949. Now don't get me wrong, the specs on paper look pretty decent, but when you actually take the time to use this laptop, you're left with a totally different feeling. Now it's heavy at 3.5 pounds with a U series processor inside. That's too big for a laptop like this. Like, don't get me wrong, it feels solid in the hands, but I don't know if this is metal or not. It might be some sort of really thin magnesium alloy, but it does feel very, very cheap. There's a bit of lid flex at the top. I think this pink color is very gaudy and ugly. The good thing though, is it does have a lot of ports with an HDMI port, RJ45, two USB-A ports, type C, not even Thunderbolt on the right hand side. And then on the left, you have your power connector, USB-A, SD card slot, and then of course your headphone jack. Now the laptop runs and functions fine. Like you can open it up with one hand. You have kind of like the ergo hinge that Asus does. This thing kind of does the same thing by lifting the keyboard deck up in the air for better cooling. The keyboard is very interesting because typing on it is fine. Like I didn't find it hard to type on this thing. It was very easy. Travel distance is fine, but the keys do feel super mushy. There's three levels of backlighting. You can't change the color. It's obviously going to be white. There's a page up and page down key, which is always good to have. And thinking that this is a heat vent is the wrong way to go about it. Because if you look at all these holes, only two sections go through the laptop or go through the deck where the rest is kind of filled in. Now, there are two speakers up here, okay? I'm glad they put front facing speakers, but the issue I'm having is that they don't sound that great. You know, they just don't get loud enough. Like you're like, is there sound coming out of this thing? You're better off just hooking up headphones or just not using the speakers at all. The touchpad is atrocious. It's just so tiny that when you use it, your fingers feel completely cramped and touching down or pressing down rather on this is very inaccurate, it requires a lot of force. You're just better off using the bottom buttons the entire time. It has a fingerprint scanner and it also has a webcam. This is a very terrible webcam, but at least it has one. And there's a kill switch if you wanna block privacy or if you wanna block anybody from hacking your computer and staring at you. The bezels are chunky, the display is 1080p, it's 60 hertz, the color gamut is so bad you wouldn't, I wouldn't trust this to edit any photos in Photoshop. The brightness is so low that you're just better off closing your eyes and picturing what you wanna see on the display than actually looking at this thing. You bring this outside and all you're gonna see is black. It, it's just not worth it, okay? The only thing they did right, to be quite honest, is the sticker placement. Now, I know it sounds super harsh and, and, and look, I have to be because they're charging $949 for this thing. You know what you can get? for $949. Actually, you know what you can get for $849? The HP Pavilion Plus, which comes with an OLED display, 90 Hertz and an H series processor. I can't believe they're charging close to $1,000 for this thing. This is a $600 laptop at the most and they're, they're putting it in a premium or sorry, mid range sector. It just doesn't make sense to me. Okay, you wanna talk about performance? Fine, I'm gonna do it. I don't really care at this point. I'm done, I can shut the video off and have a great day, but I'm gonna talk about it for you because maybe there is one dude out there that really wants this, okay? And if you are, this i7-1255U processor is Intel's 12th gen U series. It's very similar to last year's 11th gen series. It's a little bit faster, which is good, a little bit, not by much, slightly faster single core clock speeds, but the multi-core speeds are really not an upgrade. You're better off buying a P series or an H series from Intel. I wouldn't buy this to edit any videos on it because the Iris XE is starting to show its age. The CPU performance is more than adequate for just general productivity and browsing the internet. In fact, it actually did that quite good. I'll give it that, okay? It actually did that quite good, which is really not hard to do in 2022. But the fans kick on for anything. You load this thing up, you load up a web page, fans are on. They're not loud, thankfully. The most I got was 40 decibels at the top end, cranking everything to the complete max. But 40 decibels is where it will end and it keeps the CPU quite cool the entire time. It just power throttles in order to do that. Just know that I really don't wanna open up this laptop at this point, I've made up my mind, but I feel like there's a lot of pressure from you right now to ask me to open this up. So I'm gonna do it just for you. 
All right, that's kind of sacrifice I'm making here. And look, this is the internals, right? It's actually not bad. I'll give them credit for putting decent internals inside. You have a 55 watt hour battery, which actually got good battery life under 10 hours. You have two slots for RAM, which most other laptops are now soldering onto the motherboard. And of course you can upgrade it. Only downfall is it's DDR4, not DDR5. You have a one terabyte drive. It's not the fastest NVMe SSD. It's one of the cheaper, slower ones. And the Wi-Fi card is actually Wi-Fi 6. So that's good. But the problem is, and I've already said it, it's 900 and $49. And what they're giving you is a very, very, very budget experience for that price point. And with all the competition that's currently happening at $849 to $949, this is a ripoff. Straight up, it is a ripoff. Because it feels so low quality, I'd price this thing at like 650, you know? And if you are looking at this thing because you are a complete utter nut job, and quite frankly, you're just better off paying for the i5 because it's a couple hundred bucks cheaper. So that's my review. Vio, no, no. Stay away from it for this price point. There's better options out there and I'll list them below. Like the video if you liked it, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys in the next one.